Hello and welcome. Welcome to Yoga Solutions with me, Mark J. Aquavivo. Um, today I wanted to uh, do a deep dive into the neck. Uh, a lot of people have um, issues with the neck and shoulders and it's uh, fundamentally due to a relatively sedentary lifestyle um, based on living in your head. So, uh, you know, if you uh, have a job where you're sitting at the computer all day, you know, you're working things out with your head, you'll be leading your movement. Your body will be kind of heavy and relaxed to some degree, but you'll be leading your movement with your head. And uh, the result of that is you, you pull on the spine between the head and the um, shoulders, uh, and the muscles you use will be those muscles. So the neck gets tired, and so do the shoulders, and the spine kind of gets pulled on in the process. So um, that, that might be the source of the issue. Um, the solution is to do with how you attend to things. And th that brings me into some of the deep dive stuff that I want to do around the neck. Because um, th th there's some unusual vertebrae in the neck that are to do with the functioning of your attention, where, where, where you take your attention. Uh, and it's the first two vertebrae, it's the atlas and the axis. The atlas is like a cradle upon which the bowling ball of the skull sits. And it's not fixed there. The, the, it's not, a, it's not um, attached so that it is fixed in place. So, uh, and the, the angle that uh, the, the bowling ball sits within that first vertebra depends on your attention. So if, for example, you are um, sort of inside yourself, if you're introverted, back, observing, and in a kind of distanced relationship to what you're looking at around you, basically, if you're looking inwards, the tendency is to roll the head forwards on that first vertebra so that you are sitting further back because you have to do that uh, gravitationally. Um, but if that becomes a postural strategy, uh, tucking your chin in, and then you are forwards, you end up basically having a stiff neck. So, but um, it's perfectly natural when you're being introspective is to drop the eyes and allow the head to roll forwards, if you're talking about the top of the head, roll forwards on that first vertebra. Right? So that, that would give you an introspective feeling and it's favoured by most yogis because it gives you a sense of length in your neck, which is only true if the rest of the body underneath it um, balances the weight of the head. If the rest of the body beneath it is in a position where the neck has to carry the weight, you end up with neck. Okay? Uh, that was one of my first major discoveries about questioning what I was taught was, was that particular um instruction tuck your chin in okay um the opposite of that uh, the opposite of introspection is you being present you being present to the world around you and and that is an act action of the bowling ball of the head rolling back on the first vertebra so that it its weight can sit on the spine whilst your face and your um your attention basically your eyes your um, relationship to what is in front of you, if you are with that, then that, that goes with that movement of the first vertebra. And uh, it's the one I personally favour, and it might, be, uh, it might be because I'm naturally introspective and I, I had a, a lot of neck uh, issues because of it. So uh, for me, that is a more favourable uh, arrangement which brings me and gives me the idea that perhaps relating to the world around me is more useful than being internal and thinking about it okay so that, that that's my personal take on the thing but you can play with that you know you play with how you feel and, and, and make it something to do with your attention so you notice the difference between you being internal and you being with the world around you and how the head naturally sits as you do that. The other 
thing that the first vertebra allows is side to side movement. It's a, it's an elliptoid elliptical joint. It's a saddle joint, and um, the ball sits on and it can roll forwards and back to a certain degree, but it also rolls from side to side. And in the West, we don't really use that for, for some reason. It's a cultural thing. Um, it, it's more of an Asian movement. Uh, the Indian head wobble is, is, a, is a thing that's more culturally sort of available um, for the people that express in that way. Um, but uh, in terms of attention, what it goes with is um, uh, listening. It's, it's the same sort of thing. If, you, if, if you're not really listening to the world around you, they'll be holding uh, at the sides of the head um, to hold your head up uh, on both sides equally. If you're paying attention to what's outside, then there's a tendency to let the head roll um, so that you kind of expose that side um, to, to space, to the thing that you're, you're paying attention to. So if you have an interest in something over there on the right, your, your face will be forwards because your eyes are interested. And your head will be tilted to the left so that you can pay full attention to what's over there. Okay. And if you're, um, yeah, if you're interested in what's over to the left, then face forwards so that your uh, vision, you know, your interest is pointing in that direction and a tilt of the head, the weight of the head, you're talking about the top of it over to the right so that that ear is present to space so you can hear okay so that that first vertebra movement is quite important because it, it relates to how you are relating to the world and um when when that relation if you retract from the world in order to do your yoga you're going to have a very um kind of distorted picture of how the body works because the act of retracting your attention will cause the weight of the head to be held by the neck and shoulder. You see what I mean? Whereas if you can take your attention to, to the world around you, then that places this, this very pivotal structure at the top of things in a, in a place where its weight can be uh, supported through the spine rather than carried by muscles around the spine, if that makes any sense. Uh, it, it's, it's when you have to hold yourself together that you get stiff, you get stiff in your neck and shoulders. When you can balance through structures, particularly the spine, the spine can be free, free to express, which I, I think is, is its main purpose. Okay, so um, if you want to explore that with me, um, a... A way of exploring that um, without the complications of the rest of the body is to lie down um, because you can organize yourself in a way that um, allows the head to surrender its weight directly into the ground behind you. And uh, the way I encourage people to find that is instead of lying down and stretching your back and stretching your neck, which will separate you from your body, um, you lie down in a way that kind of puts you together. So if, if when you first lie down, you tuck under, um, you, you take that out by coming onto your feet, uh, front of your feet and heels, and then heels so that the pelvis can float and then pushing away from yourself with your feet so that your upper back is anchored down away from the head rather than your head pulling away from the upper back. And that helps you have a bit of space around the neck and throat and it allows you to Surrender the weight directly into the ground of your head. Uh, all those details being taken care of is so that you can be present. You can be present to both the support behind your head that is being offered and um, to the uh, space above you and all around you. So if you've got that, then you can play. You can get your fingers, uh, stick a thumb, put your fingers around either side of your head and Making sure that the um, that you're kind of leaning into your head through your hands, so your shoulders aren't holding up. You need a quite a firm contact to 
um, make sure that the shoulders aren't going in the way. You can just explore how the head can tilt from side to side. And you can explore the angle at which the head feels like it can give its weight back to the ground and even become a point of support. And uh, when you tilt the head round to the right a little, it's so that you can listen and hear out through the left. See if you can make that association. And you do it through a single breath. You know, if you if you kind of breathe as if listening out through the left, and you release the breath into the same action, and have the experience of the head being settled in a in a, at that angle. And you can listen out through the right, and use your hands so you don't overly use the neck muscles. And then breathe the action by listening out through the right as you breathe, and remain listening as you remain attentive as you let the breath go. You have a kind of received experience. Um, when you've explored that side to side movement, we can get into the next vertebra. The next vertebra is the axis, and it's um, it's a very unusual vertebra. There's no, no other vertebra quite like it. It, it, um, it has a, a ring structure like the atlas does, um, but it has a growth up the middle that, that forms a pin that kind of sits on the inside of the atlas, and it gives you the potential for spinning, basically, so, so that the atlas and skull can spin on the second vertebra on the axis. And uh, it, it's... Um, it's a movement that's blocked by pulling your head round. If you, if you pull your head round to the right, you're, you're basically using the neck muscles to side bend and um, into the right. And then the twist is kind of blocked because you're already leaning over there and the, the pin can't sit properly on the atlas. Um, so the solution is to let your head be interested in the direction that you're going to be turning. So you allow the head to kind of roll away from the, if you want to turn your head to the right, you allow your head to roll away from the right, uh, roll over to the left, so that the right ear is exposed and your interest in space on the right. And then the turn is kind of a relaxation below the lip. That brings your head round to the right. And you can hear and see without blocking it up with tension. So uh, try that on the other side. So you, you're going to turn your head to the left. Um, try it. Feel the pull between neck and shoulder that normally does that. Um, come back to the middle. See if you can relax a little bit of space on the left-hand side by being interested. Um, about, by being interested in what is in space on the left-hand side, so that you have a little bit of space first, and then when the uh, when your weight, when the, when the ribs, when the shoulder on that side can drop, it'll br bring you around. So you get a, an experience of um, sort of being, simply being over to the left without having to pull yourself there with your neck. You might find other muscles working underneath the, the shoulders, um, inside your ribcage. And... Um, that's actually the source of how you um, can be in space, be doing what you're doing, attending to what you're doing, whether it's on the computer or in, generally in life, but moving from the spine, from the thoracic spine, from the part of the spine that has rib cage attached to it. It's where these um, sideways and rotational movements are meant to come from. And when they come from the neck and from the, from the lumbar spine, that's where you get uh, hip and shoulder problems because uh, it's not what the spine is designed for. It's more of a, um, uh, a pulling your weight around kind of thing. So, yeah, one more, one more go. We're going to turn to the right. Just, um, just let your head lull a little bit to the left. So with your face forwards and up, so you're not heavily on your, in, on your insides, you know, you're not looking inward. 
you're looking outwards, you're listening outwards with a bit of space on the right hand side. Bring your hands over to your right lap. Hook those hands on your lap so your shoulders can rest back from it. And then you're doing a sort of lilting side bend away from the right. And you might find that you're already turning to the right as you do so. The thing that's going to ground you and center you in the thoracic spine is when underneath that right shoulder can drop away from you and that will be your rib cage coming together on that side and you, your head will follow because it's all of a piece you know so, and the, the turning is coming from the rib cage the thing that will help that is uh, if your breath agrees with it so if instead of lifting to breathe and then dropping with the release of the breath you can breathe what you're doing which is and what you're doing is being attentive to what's on the right hand side for your hearing and, and seeing. And if, if you do that from a release of weight, then you should feel that the breath comes up to support you in this attitude of length on the right hand side whilst you're attending to what's on the right. If when you have breathed, you find balance where you can let go of your weight, the place you want to let go from is below the neck so that the ribs on that side drop and you come into a turn rather than a side bend. And that will be a change in the upper spine, somewhere in the rib cage. Okay? Try the other side. You're going to turn to the left, so be interested in the left. Rest your head away from it so it will roll away from the left a little, eyes forwards and up, so you can be attentive, you breathe it, and if you give your weight to the left hand side as you breathe, then the breath will come in to support what you're doing, bring your hands round and hook them over your lap on the left, and let your shoulders hang back from that, and that will help bring the thoracic spine into things. So you breathe what you're doing, which is being with space on the left. And as you release the breath, you want the space between your head and your shoulder to drop. And that happens when the ribcage changes underneath it. That change in the ribcage is the thing that is doing the turning. So each time you um, breathe or release the breath, feeling some kind of effort in there is okay. You know, you, you can hang back again to breathe. So it's a relaxed breath. And you'll be floating in space. And then when you release the breath, you'll, you'll get grounded. Or you can breathe what you're doing, which will cause those ribs to continue to work um, as you breathe. Because what you're doing is you're turning and you're listening and seeing. And those ribs will be doing that. And then when you release the breath, the opposite side will drop as well allowing you to settle into what you're doing. So turning comes from the ribcage. And it's not a restriction of, mo of um, movement in the neck. It, in fact, movements in the neck happen passively. Um, and it's mostly based on these first two vertebrae, the sideways lilt of the weight of the head, together with the rotation that happens when everything below moves on the axis, through the axis. And um, your attention is key. Okay, so that'll do for um, uh, for my uh, free viewers, and I shall continue with this for my premium members in a moment. Um, yes, I hope that was interesting, and uh, you found some value. Uh, apologies for my absence over the last few weeks. Been dealing with a lot of stuff to do with my mum. Been quite stressful, and I got quite ill. <laughs> Uh, but I'm recovered now and things are a bit more in place. So um, I'm back and I shall be doing more of these more regularly. So, um, yeah, I hope that was useful. Much love to you all now. Bye. Until same time, same place next week.